Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to replace the heating element in a Bosch Max 7 washing machine. A few days ago, during a wash cycle, the RCD residual current device tripped and the machine completely lost power. After draining the water, the washing machine started working again. So my first suspicion was the heating element. In washing machines of this type, the heating element is located at the bottom of the drum. Access to it is either through the front panel or the rear panel. If the heater is installed at the back, access is much easier. But in this case, you will need to move the washing machine to reach the rear panel. In this model, the heating element is located at the front. To access it, you need to remove the front panel. This is not too difficult to do. The washing machine is quite large and heavy, so front access is more convenient. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the washing machine from the power supply. We start disassembling from the bottom part. Open this cover. Here, you will find the pump filter and the drain hose. There is only one screw here. We will need a Torx T20 bit. That is all that is required. Unscrew the screw. At the attachment point, pull the plastic panel towards you and slide it to the right. It will fully detach. Remove the drain hose. On both sides of the plastic panel, there are corner clips that secure it to the body. At the bottom of the front panel, on both sides, left and right, there are two screws each. Unscrew the screws on both sides. Next, you need to detach the rubber seal ring from the front panel. This can be done without removing the door but I will remove the door as it is held by only two screws. I want to do everything as neatly as possible. Unscrew these two screws and remove the door. The door comes off easily by lifting it upward. After removing the door, we need to detach this rubber seal from the front panel. It is secured with a spring-loaded retaining ring. I remove the door to start removing this ring at the point where the spring is located. If you start removing it elsewhere, for example here or here, using a flathead screwdriver, there's a risk of deforming the retaining ring itself. So we will do everything correctly and start removing the retaining ring right here, where it is attached to the spring. Do this carefully to avoid damaging the rubber seal. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently pull the retaining ring away and slowly remove it. This is how it is done. Move around the perimeter and remove it completely. Now, the seal can be detached from the front panel. By carefully pulling it away. Check the seal for damage and tuck it under the front panel. There is one more step left. You need to remove the detergent drawer and unscrew one screw here. These two screws do not need to be unscrewed. There is a metal latch from the front panel here. It fits under the upper plastic front panel and is secured with this screw. Now we will unscrew it and the panel will be removed. still using the same Torx T20. The 
the front panel has already started shifting downward. Carefully turning it with a screwdriver, I was able to remove it. Remove the front panel by pulling it downward, but be careful. On the right side of the panel, there's a door lock sensor connection. It needs to be carefully detached and unplugged. There are two clips here, see them? The plastic is soft, so it comes off easily. Now disconnect the connector. There is a clip, press it, and unplug. The front panel is removed. Let's take a look inside. At the bottom of the drum is the heating element. Two power terminals, a temperature sensor, and grounding. How can we diagnose whether the heating element is faulty? The first thing we need to do is disconnect the power terminals and use a multimeter to check the heating element for continuity. If the heating element has completely corroded, it will not show continuity, meaning there is a break. Take a basic multimeter, set it to continuity mode, and test the heater. The heater is not broken, so it still works. Most likely, the surface layer has started to deteriorate, allowing moisture to penetrate inside, causing a current leakage. What should be done in this case? Disconnect the heating element's power wires and start the washing machine on any wash cycle with heating. We need to make sure the washing machine will function. The cycle will never complete on its own because the water will not heat up. The timer on the display will count down to zero, but the machine will keep running. Then you just need to stop it and drain the water manually. In this case, you will know the problem is with the heating element. If the RCD trips with the heating element disconnected, the issue is elsewhere. In our case, I have already diagnosed this, and with the heating element disconnected, the washing machine completes a full cycle normally. So, the problem is the heating element. Now we will remove it. Carefully disconnect the remaining connectors. Lift this tab slightly with a thin screwdriver to release it. Next, disconnect the temperature sensor. There is also a clip here. Lift it up and disconnect it. All wires are disconnected. Take a 10 millimeter wrench, which fits perfectly. The nut is only lightly tightened. Loosen the nut, but do not remove it completely. Loosen it until the thread begins. Now, push the entire threaded rod along with the nut into the drum. If it doesn't move easily, tap it lightly, but very carefully to avoid damage. Now the nut has moved inward. And the threaded rod is fully inside, leaving only the outer part with the nut visible. Now take a screwdriver, one or two, and carefully start wiggling the heating element from below to remove it from the hole. Do this very carefully. It's already moving. That's it. Carefully extract the heating element. There may be some water here. Depending on the condition of the heating element, removing it might be easy or difficult. In my case, 
the heating element comes out quite difficult. This is how it looks. Most likely it started breaking down somewhere in this area. Here's the damaged heater. Now I will clean it and we will take a closer look. Most likely the casing started breaking down here, causing a current leak. Here's the temperature sensor. It is inserted into a special hole through a rubber gasket. It can be removed by hand and placed into the new heater. Let's set it aside. Our heater is from the brand Urca. 230 volts, 2000 watts with a fuse. It is a universal heater, compatible with washing machines from Bosch, Gorenje, Brandt, etc. Now I will go to the service center and try to find the same one. Less than two hours later, I have a new heater in my hands. Now we will install the temperature sensor and assemble everything back in reverse order. The sealing method is quite interesting. With the help of this nut and threaded rod, the plate is pressed down. The rubber gasket deforms and expands, ensuring a tight seal. So if you tighten the nut, the gasket will start swelling. For example, as we tighten the nut, the gasket begins to flatten and expand. Now we place the temperature sensor back. Next, we install everything back into the drum. When installing the heater, it is important to ensure that it fits inside this bracket. This bracket is located inside, under the drum. The heater must go inside the bracket and not stay on top. If the heater remains above the bracket, the drum will hit it. That would be an incorrect installation, so be careful. After installing the heating element, Make sure to check how the drum rotates. Are there any impacts or unusual noises when rotating? Through this hole, you can see how the heater is installed. When the heater enters the bracket, you will feel additional resistance. This indicates that the heater is installed correctly. Now it is inside the bracket and being inserted with additional effort. Next, we fully install it into its mounting place with the rubber gasket. Right away, we can check the drum rotation. The heater is installed correctly and the drum rotates without any extra noise or impacts. We secure the heater with a nut. I think two turns should be enough. Let's check that the heating element is installed tightly. For additional security, we can turn the nut another half turn. Now we need to reconnect all the wires, grounding, and the temperature sensor. While tightening the nut, the temperature sensor slightly moved out, so we need to push it back inside with a finger. We connect both terminals
And don't forget about the door switch. Now we can reinstall the front panel. At the top, it has guides on both sides. Here is one of the guides. It needs to be inserted into this hole. We do the same on the other side. Next, we start with the top screw and secure the front panel so it doesn't fall down. We fully tighten the top screw. Now the front panel is securely in place. Next, we install the rubber seal. We start from the bottom and then install the retaining ring. This step is tricky. It must be done carefully so the ring fits properly. Take your time and do everything precisely. The seal is installed. Now we put in the retaining ring. The spring should be placed in the same spot as before, near the door hinge. Next, we install the door and reassemble the lower part. The door is very easy to install. It has hooks, so it can be hung right away and will stay in place. There is no need to hold it while securing the screws. At the bottom, we need to tighten four screws, two on the left, and two on the right. Then we install the plastic cover. We position the lower panel slightly to the right and then slide it to the left until the clips snap into place. Now we just need to tighten one screw and install the second part of the lower panel. We put back the detergent drawer and now it's time to test the washing machine. We connect the plug to the power supply and turn on the washing machine. The washing machine works. Now I will start the shortest cycle with heating to fully test its operation. The washing machine has started its cycle. We need to check for leaks. Water is already filling the drum and soon it will be full. We must make sure there are no leaks on the floor and that the machine functions properly during water heating. I hope it helps you repair your washing machine on your own without needing a specialist, saving some money. That's all for now. Like and subscribe to the channel. Bye.